have you ever wondered if you were being love bombed? Well, at the Center for Growth, we help people just like yourself develop the tools to be able to recognize this. In case you're wondering, I, Alex Caroline Robboy, am the founder, and I've been a practicing therapist for over 25 years, and I'm licensed in several states. So, are you being love bombed? New relationships are often full of excitement, anxiety, romance, confusion, surprises, and fun. In the midst of such strong feelings, it can be very difficult to tell in just a few dates what qualities or aspects of a potential new potential new partner will blossom into great assets or develop into harmful patterns. In fact, some relationships that later develop toxic or abusive dynamics start with a thick layer of charm, charisma, and a heavy dose of love bombing. Love bombing is a practice used by abusers and so-called narcissists to overwhelm a potential new mate with adoration, affection, and attention. Sometimes calculated, sometimes unconscious, the practice of love bombing can feel like it validates a common wish or fantasy, love at first sight, being truly seen, being finally valued above all else, a fairy tale romance. However, love bombing can mask darker motives and distract from harmful relationship behaviors like possessiveness, poor boundaries, controlling jealousy, gaslighting, or isolating a partner from friends and family. Here are some red flags that might indicate love bombing is underway. The first and a big telltale sign is coming on really strong. It can be very flattering for somebody we've just met to express strong feelings and enthusiasm for us. Hearing words like, you're perfect, and you're my soulmate after such a short time can be seductive and intoxicating, as can grand proclamations of wanting quickly to take things to the next level. A love bomber may sense our desires to be partnered, to be married, to live, happily ever after, and exploit those to undermine our natural defenses. If they happen to be a narcissist, they might view this as just a smart strategy to secure a mate, but everybody has flaws and baggage, and determining true compatibility takes time. Being put on a perfect pedestal is a setup for a takedown. The second is ignoring or bypassing boundaries. A love bomber may say things like, I miss you so much, I need to see you now, and push back when we express we're busy or have other plans. They may blow up our phones with texts and calls when we're unavailable or sleeping or, I don't know, and excuse the behavior with words of love and adoration. They might push for more intimacy than usual, demanding to know everything about us within a few days or weeks of dating. A love bomber might urge us to have riskier sex than we usually would, or are comfortable, perhaps wanting to go barrier free, feel as close to us as possible during sex. Some might even tell their target that boundaries are unnecessary defenses learned in past relationships that are no longer needed now that we have found our true love the perfect match. Boundaries are important for both their own sake as protective devices that keep us safe and healthy in relationships and as an assessment tool for future partners. Even when masked with sweet proclamations, any boundary violation or attempt to persuade us that our boundaries are hmm, wrong should be viewed as a red flag. The third sign is over the top gifts and gestures. Excessive is the name of the game here. The love bomber may use over the top gifts and grand gestures to convince their target, that's you, that they love them more than anyone else can. This will be out of step with the timeline of the relationship. For example, a love bomber might suggest a big trip away together 
within just a few weeks of actually knowing you, or show up with expensive, impressive jewelry more suited to a big anniversary or engagement. These grand gestures might be later called in as debts or used to dismiss other concerns, <clears throat> other concerns about the relationship. If I didn't love you, would I have invited you to Tahiti in the first place? It's good to note that differences of class, income, and culture might play into different ideas of what is an appropriate gift or gesture. However, a love bomber will usually be dismissive of the expression of feelings, discomfort, or awkwardness on the part of their target, rather than taking the note of adjusting to the next gift accordingly, the fourth sign. And the one that I find easiest to observe is, how do they treat others? Always good to note how a potential partner treats other people in their life. A love bomber will often show a strong discrepancy between how they treat their target with over-the-top adoration and affection and how they treat those that they don't mm, deem useful or exploit them, exploitable to them. Pay close attention to whether parent generosity, kindness, and warmth extend to their family, friends, and those in a service role. Waiters, baristas, bartenders, watch for signs of impatience, cruelty, or inappropriate anger or entitlement. These characteristics might be limited to others for a while, but will always show up later in the intimate relationship of a narcissist or love bomber. Another red flag might crop up when they talk about past partners and relationships. Is the narrative nuanced or black and white? Are all their exes crazy? Do they own any part of what went wrong in the relationship? Or do they position themselves as the nice guy or the victim, totally blameless? These are red flags and a possible preview of how they will speak of new partners in the future. Here's the hard part. Is your date too good to be true? Any creeping feeling of suspicion or discomfort should be noted early in a dating relationship. Is our gut sending an alarm bell we can now pay attention to as a signal to keep gathering data and evaluating our new potential partner? If somebody's saying exactly what we want to hear or is over the top with adoration and flattery, <clears throat> a clear head might warn that it's both unsustainable, all partners will have flaws, and may be a sign of calculated attempt to lower our defenses. To help you figure this stuff out, keep track. In therapy, we call this a dating journal. A dating journal is where you record in real time your impressions. Is a date pushing boundaries regularly? Are they being unkind to service people more than once? Talking negatively about exes and others? Showering you with gifts and praise that though flattering make you a bit uneasy? Patterns may emerge over time right there in black and white. Each entry in a dating journal should include calendar date of a notable event, a brief explanation of what happened or what was said, and a few words about how you felt. Does something feel off or make you uneasy? Are your boundaries being pushed bit by bit? You might choose to make a brief entry for each and every date or just write down notable impressions and experiences as they happen in real time. Love bombing and other experiences with a narcissist can both be disorienting and disarming. The perpetrator will often seek to explain away or distract from any untold or unsettling behavior. Keeping a journal can help create a recording of how you feel at each juncture of a new relationship, which you can later use as data and to help you validate your own suspicions and concerns. Love bombing can feel so good. It can be difficult to assess whether it's the start of a healthy, sustainable relationship or an intro to a difficult and painful dating experience. 
While keeping a dating journal can help you learning to trust your gut and validate your own feelings sometimes. Sometimes consultation with a professional may be a useful addition to cultivating a healthy partnership with yourself and with others. Contact the Center for Growth at 215-922-5683 for support on this today. Or you can subscribe to our channel and just keep on learning about personality disorders.